Hey, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Unlocking Excellence with your main man, Eric Schwefel. That's me. What is going on, y'all? I hope that you're having a great day today. If this is your first episode, if this is the first time that you're checking out Unlocking Excellence, then please, 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 please remember if you got something out of this, then we want you to share it out. That's the only fee that I have. I don't monetize this. I don't put any commercials, anything like that. I just want to make sure this information is getting out there. So please, if you get something out of this, if you enjoy this, share it out, tag me, let me know what you thought, let your audience know what you thought. And that's how we spread the word. That's how we get and raise the, get people better and raise the consciousness of the world, right? So in unlocking excellence on this podcast, right? Depending on the episode you'll listen, you're listening to, you're going to hear different insights. You're going to hear different tips, little tricks that I've, I've picked up along the way to help you unlock excellence in your own life. So think of these as the keys to opening the door to a more fulfilling life, right? So the last couple of episodes, what we've done is we've gone over this, <clears throat> excuse me, this outline of Florence Scovel Shin's The Game of Life, right? And it's a wonderful book on financial prosperity. And some of the things that we've gone over are the, <clears throat> excuse me, oh my goodness, what the game is and how that relates to the conscious and unconscious mind. We've gone over the law of prosperity. We've gone over the power of the word. We've gone over the law of non-resistance. We have hit the karma and the law of forgiveness. And then today we are going to talk about casting the burden and impressing the unconscious mind. Y'all, you got to excuse me. I got some mucus build up. <sighs> excuse me. All right. That should be better now. <clears throat> excuse me. All right. So chapter six, right? Casting, before we get started, I want to let you know that I am reading this outline, right? So if you want the outline, if you want to be able to follow along, see this for yourself, let me know. I can send it over to you. You can reach out to me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. You can email me at eric at shwefulstrength.com. And uh, just let me know what, what's up. And then if you are looking for an upgrade in your life, if you're looking to, to raise awareness, to really transform yourself in 108 days or less, then hit me up. And if you're a little skeptical, like, can, can this guy help me? I can direct you to a few of my clients and they can let you know what's happened in our time together, right? So with that, chapter six, the outline, right? And then a little bit of me adding in some commentary, casting the burden, impressing the subconscious. Chapter six, casting the burden, impressing the subconscious. The first number here, number one, is once you know the principles, you look for the easiest and quickest way to use them. Man, that in and of itself is a breakthrough, right? Stop looking for the hard way. Look for the easiest and quickest way to use them. The author found the easiest way is to cast her burden on the Lord. It's funny, if you read the Bible, I think Jesus says that same thing. Cast your burden upon Christ. Isn't that why God was incarnate and he died for us? He sent his son to die for us. Cast the burden and then stand still. Let it do it. The superconscious, which if you listen to the first chapter, right? The superconscious is the realm of perfect ideas. It's a perfect plan of our lives is it too good to be true? No, most people are unaware of it and therefore strive for the wrong things. The superconscious offers the level of deep spiritual intuition and realization of who we are, right, as God's children. So the superconscious is part of the mind that can fight man's battles and relieves his burdens. So let it, let God do what he does. It's the part of the mind, the superconscious is part of the mind that can fight man's battles and relieves and relieves his burdens, so let it. Man violates a law if he carries a burden. Example, an adverse thought carried in the subconscious. It is almost impossible to use the conscious to correctly direct the subconscious. 
The conscious is limited in its vision and filled with doubts and fears. That's why you've got to use the conscious to direct the subconscious to change the subconscious. Does that make sense? And then in this case, you can use the conscious, you can, you can let the conscious step aside in order to let the superconscious impress upon the subconscious. That's the real juice, right? Sometimes you need the first step in order to get to the second. But if you know, like you know now, that all you have to do is allow your, your conscious mind to step aside and allow the superconscious to impress upon the subconscious. Allow God to work on your soul. <clears throat> it's almost impossible to use the, the conscious to correctly direct the subconscious. The conscious is limited in its vision and filled with doubts and fears. <clears throat> I cast, you can say to yourself, the affirmation is I cast this burden on the Christ within and go free. I cast this burden on the Christ within and go free. This affirmation should be made over and over again for hours if necessary. After casting the burden by steadily repeating this affirmation, you will see truth clearly again. I cast this burden on the Christ within and go free. Darkness, number two, darkness before dawn, often before a big demonstration, all of the ancient fears and doubts of race consciousness will float up from the subconscious. Often before a big demonstration, all ancient fears and doubts of race consciousness will float up above the subconscious. Kind of makes you think about what's happening in the world today, right? Stand firm, never waver, be fearless, affirm the truth and act as if. This is active faith when all seems darkness. Face your fear, walk upright up to it and confront it. Okay, stand firm, never waver. You can do it. You can be fearless. You can affirm the truth. You can act as if. This is active faith when it seems dark. Remember to face your fears and walk upright. Walk right up to it and confront it. Some people find music and dance help them throw off this burden. Laughter is like the greatest emotion. I learned that from my the ultimate. I learned that from my martial arts master, instructor. And then really, I learned that from my mom. She loves, she loves funny animal videos and she loves America's Home videos. She loves to laugh. And I, that's why I just, she's one of my, she and my dad and God are my greatest spiritual, te spiritual teachers because they've taught me to not take life too seriously and to always enjoy laughter and find the joy in things. So notice, right, note, how this is mythos in action, not the word of logic or of the affirmation, but the repetition, the music, right? This is mythos in action. This is the force. This is God in action, not the words of logic of the affirmation, but the repetition in the music. So number three, God is the giver and the gift. He's given you himself. Knowing this really impresses the subconscious, okay? God is the giver and he's the gift. Anything else but awareness of God, the good, as the only presence is vain imagination. Anything else but awareness of God, the good, as the, as the only presence is vain imagination. Realize there is no power in evil. Remember in one of our last ones, we talk about, it's chapter four, the law of non-resistance. Nothing on earth can resist an absolutely non-resistant person be like water. Jesus says, resist not evil because there is nothing to resist. There's only one power, remember? Not two, there's no good and evil. There's only one, there's only God. In the legend of Adam and Eve, they ate of the tree of Maya, the illusion of two powers. The two powers, right? Having these two powers is a false law that we have been hypnotized into believing. There's only God, there's only God. Children are especially sensitive to being hypnotized by this race consciousness, by this darkness. This man cannot be touched by race thought, the one who is centered, the one who is in God, the one who knows that there's only God is the power in the supply. He is centered and established in right thinking. He sends out only goodwill and he is without fear. Resistance is hell. 
So y'all remember, remember, remember that God is the giver and the gift. Knowing that he is the giver and the gift really impresses upon the subconscious. You stop to worry. You start to relax. And anything but awareness of God as the good and the only presence is vain imagination. There's nothing outside of him. There's nothing outside of God. God is everything. So realize there is no power in evil. There's no power in health. Okay, you got it. I love you. Remember to share this out. You're unstoppable. I appreciate you. And that was chapter six. That was chapter six. So we have chapter seven, eight, nine, and 10. These chapter seven looks like it's going to be a bit of a shorter one, four bullet points. And then eight is eight, nine is eight, and then 10 looks to be 10 bullet points. So I hope you're ready. We are upgrading like none other before. And uh, I'm excited that you're here. I love you. Thank you again. You're unstoppable. And we'll talk soon.